Mukesh Ambani's 400,000 square foot home in Mumbai, India definitely takes the title of iconic, over the top, and controversial, but it also takes the crown as the largest and most expensive private residence in the world. Located on Altamont Road, one of the most affluent streets in Mumbai, this home stands 568 feet tall and was estimated to cost around $2 billion to build. In today's video, we are going to talk about who built this crazy house for himself. We'll get into all the specs on the house, and then last, we'll talk about some of the controversy surrounding this incredible estate. And quick introduction, in case you're new to my channel, my name is Scott, I'm a real estate developer myself out of Arizona. So here on my YouTube channel, we talk all things real estate. If you're into videos like this, think about hitting the subscribe button down below this video because according to my YouTube analytics, only like 20% of you guys who watch these videos are actually subscribers. But regardless of whether or not you decide to subscribe, if you could at least just hit the thumbs up button before we move any further, that will really help to support my channel. Mukesh Ambani is the billionaire behind the Antilia residence. So let's get a little bit into his story first. Mukesh was born on April 19th, 1957, which makes him 64 years old today. He was born in a country in Western Asia called Yemen, which is on the southern end of the Arabian Peninsula. Mukesh and his family moved to India when he was still very young, and he actually had a really modest upbringing with three siblings. After high school, Mukesh got a degree in chemical engineering, and then he enrolled for an MBA at Stanford University. He dropped out of Stanford, though, around 1980 to move back to India to help his dad with a startup called Reliance Industries, which was a company company that did just about everything, including textiles, refining, Petro and telecommunications. After Mukesh's father suffered a stroke in 1986, he took over a lot of the responsibilities at Reliance Industries, and he still stands as CEO of this company to this day. Reliance Industries seems to be pretty focused on the oil business nowadays, but the bio section of their website makes it sound like they've still stuck to their diverse roots because it says, our motto, growth is life, aptly captures the ever evolving spirit of Reliance, we have evolved from being a textiles and polyester company to an integrated player across energy, materials, retail, entertainment, and digital services. The company must be doing something right because Mukesh has amassed a net worth of $98.2 billion as of the last report, which makes him the richest person in India and the 10th richest person on the planet. Somebody who is worth around $100 billion naturally can afford pretty much anything. So it's no surprise that Mukesh built himself the most expensive private private residence on planet Earth back in 2012. This home is famously called Antilia and is sitting on about an acre of land on Altamont Road, which is Mumbai, India's version of Billionaire's Row. The area around Altamont Road is considered the wealthiest part of India, and it houses some other prominent luxury buildings like one called the Imperial, and another residential skyscraper called Loda Altamont. The specs on this house are unlike anything I've ever seen or heard of before. And for those of you guys who have been following my channel for a while, yes, it's even bigger than the one, about four times the size to be exact. Antilia stands 568 feet tall, which is the equivalent of about a 45 story building. But since so many floors are combined in this home, it actually only has 27 unique stories. In total, there is a whopping 400,000 square feet feet of interior living space, which is absolutely insane. And just to put that in perspective, that is about the same amount of floor space as three Walmart stores combined. The home has three helipads. It has its own air traffic control. There, of course, is a movie theater. It's got a 168 car garage, which spans all six of the lower levels. And to get around, of course, there are nine high speed elevators. Now, I wasn't able to find a nice clean diagram in one place that shows you guys kind of how this home flows. So I'm just going to put the pieces together for you with this photo that I found on Wikipedia. So you can see overall architecture on this place is really cool. The building is made primarily of steel and glass. And starting at the top, that's obviously where the three helipads are located. And then right below that is this section where he has his own air traffic control. These next four floors in the middle is the section that Mukesh, his wife, his children, and his mother all live in and realistically probably spend most of their time. This big section that sticks out here 
is a maintenance floor, so nothing really super exciting happening there. If you're cool enough to be friends with the Ambani family, then you'd be staying here in this section because these are the guest floors quarters. And then this pop out here is the health and wellness section of the building. So this is where the gym, the spa, a swimming pool, yoga rooms, and all of that stuff are. Below the wellness center is several floors dedicated to a garden, which is pretty cool because if you think about it, this building otherwise doesn't have a whole lot of green. And then out of frame, the garden is sitting on a 50 seat movie theater followed by those six floors of parking that we talked about earlier. The architect behind this building was called Perkins and & Will, and if you look at their website, you see that the style of all their work is very modern and is totally in line with the style of Antilia. I don't know about you guys, but I personally think that the architecture of Antilia is actually pretty cool, but I do understand why I could get some criticism for other reasons, and we'll get into that in a minute. The contractor on this build-out was called Leighton Holdings at the time, but they've since been bought out by a company called Cemic Group. Since Antilia was built for the Amani family, it was never actually listed for sale, which means there's not a whole lot of interior photos available online. Of course, I scoured the internet for photos though, and the best that I was able to find were from events that were hosted by Makesh's wife and daughter-in-law. None of these photos actually show off any real details of the house, they more just show off all of the crazy lavish parties that they have thrown there over the years. But it's pretty cool to be able to get a little bit of an insider look at the house and a sneak peek of the scale and how seriously extravagant some of the spaces are. This video wouldn't be complete if we didn't get into the controversy that surrounds the Antilia house. The biggest point of contention for people is the massive income disparity between the average person who lives in Mumbai and the millionaires and billionaires who also live there. See, Mumbai is technically India's richest city, but the Average monthly income for somebody working in Mumbai is about 20,000 Indian rupees per month, which amounts to about 266 US dollars per month. So when a billionaire builds a 400,000 square foot primary residence right in the middle of the city that towers almost 600 feet tall, some people look at that as a little bit obnoxious. There was an Indian prime minister named Manmohan Singh who said that business leaders should be role models of moderation, and a $2 billion house definitely doesn't demonstrate moderation in any way. But hey, I'm gonna be the devil's advocate here and say that for a guy who's bringing in about $4.5 million per day, and is considered one of India's most generous businessmen, then it's okay for him to spend a little bit of his fortune on himself. I mean, come on, the guy is worth like $100 billion, so for him to build a house of this caliber only represents like one or 2% of his net worth. That's the equivalent of somebody with a $1 million net worth building a $20,000 house for themselves. I'm not trying to get political here, and I do understand that this house does demonstrate a massive flaunt of Mukesh's wealth, but I also think that it's not fair to judge him on what he's doing with his money when he's also doing a lot of good with that fortune. Mukesh Ambani really is one of those figures that is just impossible to relate to. His net worth is so out of control that from whenever I started researching him a couple of days ago to today, whenever I actually started filming this video, it has moved up and down literally billions of dollars several times. And the Antilia house might be a little bit lavish for a lot of people's tastes, but what else would you expect when you consider that we are talking about the biggest and the most expensive private residence in the world. Another thing that I didn't mention that's pretty cool is that this house actually has created a ton of jobs for the local community because the Antilia house requires a staff of 600 people to maintain it. That staff includes the cooks, the cleaners, the housekeepers, the security, the drivers, the gardeners, and the air traffic controllers. Plus, I'm sure it's not that bad of a gig working at the most expensive house on the planet, and I'm sure the Ambani family treats all of their staff really well. Whether you love the Antilia house or you hate it, it's pretty cool to be able to see one of the most expensive things in the world that money can buy. Although, to be honest, even if I had an unlimited budget, I think I'd still prefer to live in my modest little 2,000 square foot ranch style home. If you enjoyed the video, just one more reminder to hit the like button down below for me before you go. And don't forget to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber because I'm posting new videos every week. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. So until next time, see ya.